Hi friends, Infosys in 1994 used to make roughly 15 crore rupees as revenue every year. Today, Infosys makes roughly 150,000 crores as annual revenues, that is roughly 10,000 times. Why am I telling you this? Simply because EV industry is at a stage right now where IT industry was in 1994. So in the next 30 years, Indian roads are completely going to look very different with only electric vehicles. You will now say, Rahul, how come you've become an astrologer? Well, I'm not. I'm simply going to show you some auto experts views on this. Have a look at my screen and you will see that Shailesh Chandra, who is the managing director of Tata Motors, estimates Indian electrical vehicles to reach 1 million by 2030. Look at what Balbir Singh Dhillan, who is the Indian head of Audi, is saying about electric vehicle market. He is saying that 50% of sales are going to come from electric vehicle segment by 2030. It is estimated that electric vehicle sector is going to grow at a CAGR of roughly 49% between 2022 and 2030, which is a massive growth. I can't stress enough that EV sector is going to make some of us Karurpati definitely provided we select the right EV stocks at the right time and hold them for a long period. In fact, I will play this video 10 years from now to show you what I said 10 years ago. So if you want to watch this video 10 years later, subscribe to my channel. See how I sneaked subscription into my video. Well, jokes apart, in this video, I'm going to share with you three massively discounted EV stocks that you can consider holding for long term. With that, let's get this video started. The first stock is Meal, a company that you may not even have heard about. What is Meal? So Meal is a subsidiary that has been created by Mahindra and Mahindra Group. As you can see, Mahindra Electric Automobile Limited Meal was created last year in October 2022. Since this is not yet a listed company, the only way to invest in this company is by buying Mahindra and Mahindra shares. And I see a strong possibility of this company being demerged from Mahindra and Mahindra Group five years, seven years down the line because of its high valuation. So last year, Mahindra Group announced that they are going to invest roughly 10,000 crore rupees in this company. Where is this money going to come from? Well, already few anchor investors have started to pour money into this. For example, British International Investment, a finance institution based in UK, announced that they are going to invest roughly 2000 crore rupees in this company. As well as just two weeks ago, Tamasek, a Singapore based company, announced that they are going to join the party as well and going to put in at least roughly 1200 crore rupees in this company and what you can see clearly is that the valuation of this company meal has gone up from 7300 crore rupees to roughly 800 crore so the valuation will continue to go up as more and more anchor investors join this company there are total six key reasons i am very bullish about mahindra and mahindra as a group in particular ev business of mahindra and mahindra group reason number one is growing market share of suv in the indian passenger vehicle market and mahindra and mahindra understands the suv business really really well let me ask you to take a guess in terms of what is the percentage market share of suvs right now in the indian passenger sector pause the video and let me know in the comments well as per the data if you see the data suv market share is reaching close to 50 percent of indian passenger vehicle sales in july 2023 that is a huge growth in the suv segment and also if you look at this data you will see that mahindra scorpio if we compare the may data from last year has shown a 114 percent growth rate in terms of the number of units sold not only this if i show you the statement given by the cfo of mahindra and mahindra group manoj bhatt they are sitting at an order backlog of roughly 2.92 lakhs suvs reason number two is mahindra and mahindra has come up with a new architecture called Inglo, a bond electric platform. Inglo simply means in means India at heart and glow means global at reach. This is a bond electric platform and you can see here on my screen the SUVs that they are going to launch in the next two years. While it is absolutely fantastic to have a plan on the paper, the question is how executable is this plan? And the key component of electrical vehicles is their batteries, their cells, etc. So what is the plan from Mahindra and Mahindra on this side? Well, what you see on my screen is that earlier Vox Volkswagen and Mahindra and Mahindra had signed a contract where Volkswagen was supposed to provide MEV which is the modular electric drive kit like electric motors, batteries and cells etc. But there is a delay in that and in order to mitigate that risk what Mahindra and Mahindra has done is they have tied up with a Chinese company called BYD and Pharisees which are going to provide the batteries for their electrical vehicles. So this is the third reason I feel very very confident about Mahindra and Mahindra as a group which has got a plan on a paper and they are executing that in the background. So far if you're finding this information useful hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my member community because that is where I announce my investment 
bets as well as in-depth exclusive analysis for my member community. You might now ask me that Rahul, from a business perspective, this looks good, but what about the share price? What about the financials of this company? Let me quickly show it to you. What you see on my screen is in last one year, the share price has given roughly 20% returns. But from a financials perspective, if you go and have a look at the numbers, you will see an extremely powerful growth when it comes to revenue as well as profits from every aspect that you see it is looking absolutely jam of a company let me just move to the growth view so that you can see the percentage changes here and you will see 35 percent growth in revenues 35 percent growth in ebitda 56 percent growth in net income that is extremely extremely high and 50 percent growth in earning per share that is extremely extremely good growth in the last couple of years that the company has shown as a group they have shown but let me also now show you from a valuation perspective if we just consider pe and and I know that PE does not give us the complete picture, but it gives us a good indication. Have a look at my screen and you will see that the median PE of the company is around 19. And right now the company is PE is trading at roughly 17. It used to be at earning per share roughly 16, but now the earning per share has gone up to 86, bringing the PE massively low, meaning the right now the stock is highly, highly discounted. So their strong financial numbers is my reason number four to be really bullish about Mahindra and Mahindra as a group, in particularly the EV sector. Let us now move to my reason number five that why I'm bullish about Mahindra and Mahindra as a group from an EV perspective because of the synergies in their sectors that they operate in. For example, you see in my screen in the three wheeler sector, they are already seeing good penetration when it comes to electrical vehicles. They are already 10% into this segment and also they hold 60% market share in this segment. My point is very simple. As soon as they launch SUVs and electrical vehicles, actually the entire company might pivot to electrical vehicles in the coming eight to 10 years. So I'm ready to take that long-term bet on this group. Let me now present to you my final argument, which is to say that Rahul, why are you not considering Tata Motors, which is holding right now almost 75% of market share when it comes to electric vehicle passenger market segment? For me, it's a very simple explanation let us quickly compare Tata Motors and Mahindra and Mahindra group you will see on my screen Tata Motors and what you will see in the last few years if you see how the stock has performed it is extremely volatile has gone up like this went down come back up again crashed like anything and now soaring like anything while if you look at Mahindra and Mahindra group it is extremely extremely stable if you just remove the COVID period and if I were to draw a line from here it is a classic example of a growth stock also if you look at the valuations and compare it you will see that right now Tata Motors is at a PE of 93 it is highly overvalued compared to Mahindra and Mahindra which is undervalued right now so from that perspective I am taking this long term bet on Mahindra and Mahindra not on Tata Motors also last thing on Mahindra and Mahindra this is not a push or a recommendation for you to go and buy this stock I simply presented my honest advice my research that I have done hopefully you will do your own further research to make the right informed decision for yourself in fact let me know in the comments your favorite electric vehicle manufacturing stock that you want to hold for 10 years or 8 years and I would love to read about it. EV stock number 2 in my list is Amra Raja Batteries which is the second largest battery manufacturing company in India. If you ever plan to go to Tirupati Balaji, you will find Amra Raja factory nearby. You might want to consider giving a visit to the company to see how actually the batteries are made. But why is this stock on my EV list? Simply because batteries are the soul of electric vehicle and Amra Raja has been supplying a lot of batteries to automotive sector. They in fact have seven battery manufacturing plants. Right now in these seven plants, they make lead based batteries. So for example, they are supplying battery to four wheeler market segments, two wheeler market segment. They in fact hold roughly 35% market share in the aftermarket components of the battery supplies. Also in telecom sector, they are the market leader. They hold roughly 60% market share in telecom sector. Also, if you look at their financials, we will see that year on year, their operating income, their EBITDA margins are growing, which is a good news. But what really attracts me into this company is that they are going to pivot into a business that can cater to the growing EV market. In fact, last year, they announced that they are going to invest roughly 9,500 crores worth of capex investment into a lithium cell giga factory that is going to come up in Telangana and they have signed a MOU with the Telangana government. This is a very, very bold move. This is a lot of money that they're going to invest in the coming years. And if you look at their plan, we will see that they're going to develop this giga corridor in three phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, completing by fiscal year 2032. So it's a long term plan of pumping a lot of money. Also, please know that this company is completely debt free. They are going to fund this 
potentially initially from their own cash reserves but later on they might raise more funds let us now quickly have a look at their share prices and how it has moved in the past few years so in the last five years if you see the stock hit almost 1000 level and now it has come down crashing to roughly 600 right now it is trading at a low level than its highest ever in last few years but if you look at the financial numbers of this company let us go ahead and have a look at the financials and we will see that from a revenue perspective revenues have grown up consistently from a EBITDA perspective EBITDA also has grown up nicely except in 2022 where the EBITDA has dropped mainly because of the commodity prices have been very high in 2022 on the back of the supply chain disruptions as well as the war in the Europe and if you look at the net income as well it has grown consistently from an earning per share perspective it has grown consistently no issues from a financials perspective let us quickly have a look at the PE ratio of this company and in the last 10 years if we look at the PE ratio the median PE is roughly 24.9 right now the stock is trading at roughly 14 PE which is quite low from that perspective if you also do a comparison of its peers so let us go ahead and have a look at the PE ratio and PB ratio we will see that Amra Raja right now is at 15.35 here from a PE perspective excite HBL Power, Everyday Industries, they are all at a higher PE from a valuation perspective. From a PB perspective as well, Amra Raja seems to be at very low valuation. So all in all, from a valuation perspective, it is looking good. But let us also go ahead and have a look at the debt position of the company. As I earlier said that the from a debt perspective, the company is almost zero debt. It is right now showing 100 crores of debt, which is very low in the bigger scheme of things. If you go down and have a look at the shareholding pattern and you will see that Promoter stake has been almost constant throughout and if you look at the FII's shareholding you will see that it has gone up from 18% to roughly 35% as well as DI's perspective it has gone from roughly 14% to roughly 15% until June 2021 but then it has come down to roughly 10% lately. All in all this stock might do wonders in the coming years provided their giga factory that they have set up is successful and they are able to crack the lithium base batteries that are needed for the electric vehicles. The third EV stock in my list is a company called Samvardhana Motherson International Limited, a company that is run and managed by Vivek Chan Sagal, who is the richest Indian living in Australia. It's a fascinating story of an Indian building a company that is now generating revenues of roughly $12.5 billion. You must go ahead and read the story about his progress and success. So what does this company do? This company basically manufactured the smaller components of the vehicles and then they sell it to the vehicle manufacturing companies. So right now they operate in four business divisions. Number one is wiring harnesses. Number two is modules and polymer products. Number three is vision systems used in the vehicles and number four is emerging businesses but more importantly what I really would like you to note is that their revenues coming from the EV segment that has grown by roughly 1600 crores which is very very encouraging also you will note that this company is known for mergers and acquisitions I was actually listening to an interview by Vivek Chan Sagal and he disclosed that they have done almost roughly 29 mergers and acquisitions so far till date which is extremely extremely high what really attracts me towards this company is their strong order book that is coming from the EV segment so if you look at this you will see that roughly 20% of their booked business is coming from EV OEMs which is extremely extremely encouraging from a EV sector perspective let us quickly also have a look at the share price movement in the last five years and you will see that the stock has hit close to 181 rupees as the highest price and lowest as 32 rupees during the COVID time period right now the stock is trading at roughly 97 rupees you will see a significant fall in the year 2022 mainly because this company's key business market is in Europe and Europe has been in the war zone because of Russia and Ukraine conflict in year 2022 because of which the share prices have fallen like crazy. Let us quickly have a look at their financial numbers and we will quickly see that the revenues has been going up consistently. From an EBITDA margin perspective, year 2023 has been really, really a bad year. Although they have done better in revenues, but their EBITDA margins have come down. Mainly because if you look at their annual report, you will see that the energy prices have been going up in last year. As well as the commodity prices have been going up. Also the inflation has been going up. 
meaning that their EBITDA margin is down because their expenses have gone up. But overall, the company is profitable. If you also have a look at their PE, we will see that in the last three years PE comparison perspective, their median PE is roughly 53. Right now, the PE is at roughly 42. From that perspective, it is trading at a lower PE value. Also, from a shareholdings pattern perspective, if you look at it, the good news is that their promoters hold the majority of the stakes, which is roughly 64% right now. From a FII's perspective, it used to be 15%, roughly 16% in back in September 2020. Right now, in June 2023, FII stakes have gone down to roughly 10.83%. But the good news is from a DI's perspective, it has gone up from 13.62% to roughly 15.12%. Overall, this company is looking very promising mainly because of their strong order book coming from the EV segment. So again, not a recommendation, but a stock that you need to very closely watch and analyze further to take your own positions. If you want to invest in futuristic stocks, I would highly recommend you to watch this video. Also, please consider joining my member community because that is where I post exclusive in-depth analysis on stocks, mutual funds, etc. As well as I announce my own personal investments that you might get benefited from. Thirdly, you can also follow me on Instagram and LinkedIn. You will find the links in description or in the comment section. Also, please be aware that there are a lot of scams going on my name. Please do not give a single rupee to anybody or do not click on the links that have been sent to you by individuals that are pretending to be me. I will never reach out to you on an individual basis. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in my next video. Until then, keep rocking.